Hello everyone, this is Toshi the Panda here, coming at you with my review of Sonic the Hedgehog 2. Firstly, I'd like to apologize for not getting this done sooner. I have actually seen the movie a lot sooner than the time I'm making this video, but since I was so busy with college work, you know, because spring break ended and we came back and there's so much work to do because finals are coming up, I just didn't have time to get to this. So now that I've caught up with all my work and I don't have anything to turn in and finals haven't happened yet, I thought I'd drop the review right now. And oh my god, this movie was freaking fantastic! I cannot believe it! I, I, this was better than the first movie by a long shot. Not to say that the first one was bad, the first one was good, but the second one was great. I had so much fun watching this. I saw this on my birthday, mind you. So it was twice as special for me because it, it was the best birthday gift ever. Like, seriously. So great. Like, I'm, I won't say this tops when I got taken to Disney World when I turned 10 years old. Or when I turned 18 and my mom took me to a Katy Perry concert. I wouldn't say it tops both of those things. But it's definitely in the top three of best birthday gifts I've ever gotten in my whole entire life. <laughs> Man, I don't even know where to start with this one, but I guess what I should start with is the animation, the CGI used. It is improved so much. In the first movie, it was fine. Like, after the redesign of Sonic, the animation in the movie overall was pretty good. It was decent. In this one, it's improved tenfold. Like, it's so clean, it's so smooth, it's just so fluid. Like, I don't think there's a single point in time where the animation ever flubs. It is just on point for the entire thing, and it is fantastic to look at. What's next to move on to the characters? Sonic is his usual self, fun-loving, joking. In this one, he has a bit of an arc about wanting to be a hero, and apparently he doesn't fully understand what that means. You know, but he has a childish fantasy of what a hero is like. You know, kicking butt, taking names, getting recognition. But then he has this really sweet heart-to-heart -heart moment in the beginning of the movie with Tom on a rowboat uh, where Tom explains to him that being a hero isn't all about the recognition and all that. It's mostly about helping people and how it's not about you, it's about them. And I really like that. Also, I liked the part where Sonic snapped at him saying, you're my friend, stop trying to be my dad. This reminded me of that scene from the first Spider-Man movie, the, the Sam Raimi version, where Peter essentially says the same thing to his Uncle Ben. You know, when Uncle Ben drops the whole, with great power comes great responsibility line. So, I saw a parallel between that. It's actually kind of interesting. Only, <laughs> thankfully, nothing happens to Tom in this movie. He doesn't die, thank God. <laughs> uh, who's next? Um, Tails! Tails is in this movie and he is adorable! He is just the cutest little thing ever! Every single interaction he has with Sonic is just so sweet and so wholesome. I love the part where they're at the bar and after they had that big dance battle, which by the way was the funniest thing I ever saw in my life. Dance battle with holograms, that's just, that was just amazing. But yeah, there's this scene they have when they talk to each other and Tails talks about how he was ostracized because of his two tails and everybody thought he was weird and how he looked up to Sonic because Sonic was so cool and heroic and wanted to be like him. I love it when after they go to sleep, Tails drapes his tails over Sonic to keep him warm. It's so adorable. It's so cute. I loved it. It was so great. And I loved- I, I just loved their little interactions with each other. The part, in, the part in the middle of the movie where Tails gets knocked out by Eggman's missiles and Sonic is just so worried about him. He spends a good chunk of the movie after that scene unconscious. Like, for the next- after he gets hit, for like the next 10 minutes, He's like just out cold and the whole time I was just so worried about him and like, is Tails okay? He, he's been out cold for a long time. Please tell me nothing's wrong with him. Please tell me he's not like seriously hurt because that would just break my heart. Poor little sweetie, he's just, he's just so, so precious. Must protect. Who's next? Oh, my favorite character, Knuckles is in this. He is amazing. I love Knuckles. Oh my God. I, I said before in my review of the first movie that I was iffy on Idris Elba's voice, but after actually seeing the movie and seeing all the scenes, I gotta say, dude, you are freaking hilarious. <laughs> I'm not joking. Knuckles has the funniest lines in this movie, and that usually comes from the fact that he's like, 
he doesn't know what anything is because he's on like this to him it's an alien world he doesn't understand everything and it's just new to him so most of the comedy from him comes from him just not knowing what is what and just not understanding anything and it's freaking hilarious i love the part where he's reading out loud sonic text messages to tom because Sonic was texting Tom, who was away, saying that everything's fine when he was really in danger. And Robotnik was tracking the text messages, and Knuckles was reading them. And <laughs> it was funny, especially when he was reading the dots, because one of the messages hadn't come yet, so he just kept saying, dot, 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 dot. <laughs> I can't, I couldn't stop laughing when I saw that. That was great. And, um, I like this backstory, too. It was just so sad because at the same time that Sonic lost Longclaw, he ended up losing his father and his entire tribe all in one day, and he was just a little kid. It was so sad. I just my my, just, my heart was just breaking, especially since little Nux is so cute. Look at the little Nux. He's just so small. Oh, he's so cute. And uh, speaking of backstory, um, the Master Emerald is in this. And they have a completely different backstory from the Master Emerald than in the games. Um, I don't exactly know in the games where they said the Master Emerald came from or anything, but I do remember being like, um, it was a source of power, it neutralizes the Chaos Emeralds, it controls their power, and inside said Master Emerald is Chaos, the, the water god, who ended up wiping out the Echidna tribe because they wanted to abuse the power of the Chaos Emeralds and they ended up angering Chaos. But in this movie, it has a different backstory. The Chaos Emeralds were actually fused together to make the Master Emerald, and the Master Emerald was in possession of the was in the possession of the Echidnas. But then they were stolen away by the Owl Warriors. You know where Longclaw came from. They stole it away and they hid it away, and that's what the whole conflict came from. The conflict between the Owls and the Echidnas it came from because of the Master Emerald. And the whole crux of the movie was just finding it and making sure that it was kept out of the wrong hands. But it ended up getting in the wrong hands anyway because after the after an epic fight scene between Sonic and Knuckles. By the way, the action scenes in this movie are amazing. They are just so jammed packed with movement and motion. It's just so many things happening at a million miles a minute and it's just amazing to watch. But yeah, anyway, after like the third time those two are fighting each other, Eggman gets his hands in the Master Emerald, and he becomes Chaos Eggman, I guess? He, uh, he obtains the power, and I think this is the first time in this series we've ever seen a human being use the power of Chaos. I don't think there's ever been a time in the games or in any other Sonic media where a character outside of the Sonic characters have used the power of Chaos. But this is the first time it's happened, a human uses it, and Eggman, he just... He, he knows how to use Chaos Control! He uses Chaos Control in this movie like a, do a dozen times! And then he uses it to tear apart these machines like... He, like this train and this helicopter and this tank and... By the way, Gun is also in this movie. The, the Guardian Unit of Nations that was first introduced in Sonic Adventure and had a much more prominent role in Sonic Adventure 2. Yeah, they're in this movie and... <laughs> yeah. They try to combat against Robotnik. Well, at first when they show up, uh, it turns out that the wedding that Tom and Maddie were attending to, the one for Maddie's sister Rachel and her new fiancé, Randall, who, by the way, is played by the same dude who plays... I forgot what his name is, but I've seen him. He's from Criminal Minds, so that was kind of interesting. Yeah, it turns out the fiancé was an agent for Gun, and they were actually staging this whole wedding to capture Sonic and Tails, which they end up doing. But thanks to Maddie and her sister Rachel using Tails' gadgets, they free them, and Sonic was able to go, you know, face off against Robotnik and Knuckles again, which led up to Eggman getting the Master Emerald. So yeah, he tears apart the this gun tank and their helicopter and a nearby train, and he uses the ma ma the, the Master Emerald to build the Death Egg robot. The Death Egg robot, it is so awesome. Like. It's just, and it's huge, it's giant. I mean, considering in the game where you first find it, I guess compared to Sonic, it would be giant. But in the movie, it's just like a towering, like, it's like a, it's like a 50 foot tall behemoth. It's just so big, and it's so awesome to look at. And then, and then after that part, I love the part afterwards, where after every, it looks like everything's gone to hell. 
Knuckles teams up with Sonic after Sonic saved him from drowning, and Sonic explained to him why it is that he saved his life. It's because he understood finally what it means to be a hero. It's not about you, it's about others. You have to help others. And at that point, I mean, they decide to team up together to stop Robotnik. And then they have this, and then later on, um, Sonic, Knuckles, and Tails have this Sonic Heroes moment where they team up together. Sonic is like, your strength, Tails is smart and my speed, we can do this. It's basically Sonic Heroes. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if some if Sonic actually said, let's show that creep the real superpower of teamwork. That would have just been awesome. But no, they didn't, but that would have been a great reference though. So they do team up and they do fight against Robotnik. And Tails comes flying in on the tornado, like that's amazing. The tornado too. And like in the games, it gets destroyed. Like I can, I, guess, I think at this point it's a running gag that the tornado always gets blown up. Well, but I'm sure he can build a new one in his spare time. Anyway, and there's a, and there's a part where you know, um, the Tails and Knuckles they jump into the Death Egg, and then while Tails is distracting Robotnik, Knuckles jumps up and punches the Master Emerald right out of him, and it falls out of the Death Egg. And Sonic goes to grab it, and at this point Sonic is all like beat up, and he's all covered in dirt and debris. He, he goes to grab the Master Emerald, and just before he gets stepped on by the robot, uh, Tom and Maddie come driving in on the truck and save him. But then they end up getting- the car gets- ends up getting flipped over, and it's a really tense moment. Like, the death egg is coming towards them, it's about to crush them to death, Tails and Knuckles are on the side, and Tails is going, no! And then, realizing that they might die, Sonic- it says the single most heartbreaking thing I've ever seen. He says to Tom and Maddie, I love you guys. As at that point, he actually then acknowledged that they are his new parents. And they said that they loved him too. And then the Death Egg Robot's foot just comes down on them. Of course, I know they, I knew they weren't actually dead, but it was still a tense moment. And just before it did come down, the Master Emerald had shattered into the Chaos Emeralds again. And they flipped up and went into Sonic. And guess what happened? Super Sonic came out! We got Super Sonic in the movie! And he looks amazing! Like, I didn't even think they were gonna do that in this movie. I thought they were gonna say that for the third one, but no! They did it here in the second one. They brought in Super Sonic. And he just, without saying anything, he just dismantles the Death Egg robot. It's like amazing. It's kind of like it's kind of like the opening of Sonic Unleashed where he goes super. He doesn't say anything. He just tears through Eggman's machines like it's nothing. Like they're just wet pieces of paper. And also there's a little there's a cute little Sonic 06 reference where after dismantling the robot, Sonic lightly taps it with his foot and it just falls over, kind of like in the opening cutscene of Sonic 06. <laughs> that was great. That was great to see. And the line that Eggman had afterwards was funny as well. And speaking of Eggman, Jim Carrey's performance in this movie was twice as funny as it was in the first one. He just goes all out on this one. He perfectly sells the insane mad scientist angle. The guy was just going nuts. Like, and also, he is kind of intimidating in some points. Like, when he gets the Master Emerald and he starts speaking in that creepy synthesizer voice, it was just like, what the heck, did he swallow a synth machine or something? He sounds like, he sounds really freaky right now, and it's kind of, it's kind of disturbing a bit, but in a funny kind of way, it's kind of like dark humor almost, it's, it's really creepy, but it's also, but you also have to laugh at it too, and his performance was great. Yeah, this, this whole movie was great, and then, and then I like after he, def after Sonic defeats Robotnik, Knuckles is all worried about him changing or whatever. He he says to Tom and Maddie, he's not the Sonic you know. But then Sonic uses his power to just to just materialize a chili dog out of nowhere. And I was like, I was laughing. Nope, he's the same old Sonic, all right. <laughs> same old Sonic. And then afterwards, like in every game, after he's done being super, he he ejected the Chaos Emeralds from them and they disappear. But twist, the Master Emerald. After, you know, crumpling into shards, Knuckles reformed it back into the Master Emerald. And now, like in the games, the Master Emerald and the Chaos Emerald are sep separate from each other now. I guess maybe ca I'm, I guess maybe gathering them all will be something that happened in the third movie. And then the movie ends on a really sweet note with Sonic having a baseball game with his new family. <laughs> Tails and Knuckles just playing around with them. And I love how Knuckles was just getting so into it. 
and how much fun he was having, and he basically accepted his role as the big brother immediately. Like, <laughs> the way he just picked up Tails and carried him, that was so sweet. And I also liked when Sonic finally called Tom dad, like, I was thinking, yup, he's your dad, alright, it's time you, you acknowledge that. And then that's where the movie ends. It's really sweet. But that wasn't it, because after the end credits, we got a, a mid credit scene where it turns out that not only was Agent Stone, who helped out Robotnik a few times in this movie, not only was he, you know, disguised as a gun soldier to, you know, to keep, him, to keep himself hidden, probably because Eggman's gonna come back, because, let's be honest, that guy never quits and he never dies. He just always comes back. He's like a bad dream that way. <laughs> But it turns out that one of the gun agents was telling the commander that they found a file dating back 50 years. And lo and behold, what do we get? Shadow the Hedgehog. Shadow the Hedgehog is gonna be in the third movie, and that is gonna be awesome. And I called this. I called this when the second trailer, when the trailer for the second movie dropped. I said, that I, I predicted there was gonna be a mid credit scene in the second movie where we see Shadow in his stasis pod. It wasn't on Prison Island, it looked like it's some kind of secret underground lab or whatever, but still. I called it, I called it, he's gonna be in the third movie, this is gonna be awesome. And, which means they're probably gonna adapt the plot of Sonic Adventure 2 if that's the case. And if that's the case, then maybe in the th in the third movie, we might get Amy Rose. We might get Rouge the Bat. I don't know, we'll have yet to see. This movie was just a fun time. If I have to complain about anything, I feel like the two hour, two minute runtime was a bit much, and watching the movie, I can see why. There are certain scenes that kind of linger on and drag a bit. You know, they kind of just go on for too long. I need to stretch out. And also that subplot with Rachel and her fiance, I think that kind of took a little too long. Like, there was too much focus on that. I was thinking, eh, I guess this is kind of interesting because it plays into the plot. I mean, a gun soldier was undercover just so they can capture Sonic, so I guess it has merit. But then, like, after Sonic and Tails get captured, we spent like a good minute on that subplot, and I'm like, eh, this isn't really important, can, can this just be relegated to 5 seconds only, maybe like 10 seconds, 30 seconds, and then we come back to, come back to Sonic and Tails and see what's going on? Because that's actually the part of the movie I'm most interested in. Yeah, I, I felt like there was too much focus on that, it wasn't really necessary didn't really seem to play much in the plot afterwards. But other than that, this movie was a really fun ride. I loved it. I loved every moment of it. It was just, it was fun, it was action-packed, it was exciting, it was tense, it was wholesome and sweet and heartwarming in a lot of places. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to the third one when that comes out. And I'm also looking forward to that Knuckles TV show that they're talking about coming out on Paramount+. Plus. I do plan to do episode reviews when that show drops. Like, after watching episode 1, I'm gonna come back here and give you a review of it. But until then, this is Toshi the Panda saying, have a good day, see y'all later, stay healthy, and remember to wash your hands.